Welcome to El Moro Pigeon Show. I am your host, El Moro. And before I start this video, I want you to listen. Listen. You hear that? Since I was little in my native country, I used to wake up to this sound every morning. But enough of that. Today, we're going to be talking about one particular pigeon that I have. His name is Polvacera, which means, you can say dust storm. It has to do with dust. So I'm going to say dust storm, okay? Uh, Polvacera is a special bird, okay? Let me pull him out so you can see. He fights me. Uh. <laughs> okay, Paul Basset is a special bird. He is a black diamond homing pigeon. His uh, grandparents are from Belgium. I saw the, the band. So he's a black diamond homing pigeon mixed with the Spanish powder. Okay? So about two years ago, this is a special bird, man. Look at that eye. Okay, but remember, he's mixed, so he's not gonna look, he's, he's not gonna look like a powder too much. He's not gonna look like a homer too much. Uh, but he look, he has a little of both. He, he flies like a homer, looks a little like a homer, but uh, you can, he's got a bigger pout, you know, uh, a bigger what we say in Spanish, buche. He's got a bigger buche than a regular. He's very it's, it's a good bird. It's, I like when birds are like this. It's, it's very, uh, it's got a lot of drive. Okay, this bird. So, Paul Bacera, I'm going to put him in in a minute. The, about two years ago, I had this uh, idea of making the, the, uh, the best powder pigeon. Okay, with all the qualities. Let me put him in, all right? So... <clears throat> See, this one over here is a powder. He, he's got a bigger pout, too. Than, he's got a bigger pout than Polvacera. In the Spanish, it's a moteado, okay? And it's, he's got a bigger pout. He bites hard, all right? Uh, so I had this idea about two years ago of making the, the best, uh, the, the perfect powder pigeon, okay? The powder pigeon, they call it thief powders because when you put them by themselves, you let them go. I have a, a black pigeon over there named Fantomas. And when I let Fantoma go, he goes really far to look for a female bird to bring it back to my coop, okay? Uh, another day we're going to be talking about that. Uh, so, my idea was to make the perfect powder that flies high, that flies far away, and that has a lot of seduction, you know? So, what I did, and, and, and black, I wanted it all black, because I have very good experience with black birds, okay? And I say, well, let me give myself a black diamond cock, and a gaditana hen and a high flyer, all black. Okay, so I want to get this high flyer that uh, uh, far from here on the other coast of Florida that their parents fly like nine hours without coming down, and they get so high in the air that you need binoculars. Okay. And I say, well, I'm going to get the high flyer because it, it flies higher than all the other birds that I've seen. I'm going to get the homing pigeon because the homing pigeon to me is the best of all kinds of pigeons. Okay? Very strong bird. Comes from long, long distances. And, uh, and I'm going to get the powder because what I'm trying to make is a powder with, that, with those conditions. Okay? With those qualities. So, I was looking online, 
And I saw Paul Bacera, right? I saw Paul Bacera all the way, like 150 miles away. And uh, it's a place, it's right, right before you go to Key West, Florida. So it's very far from me. But when I saw it in the, in the video, I really like this bird. I never saw him flying, but there is something about us fanciers that you don't need pedigree. I mean, I, I'm not against pedigree, but you know, you, 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 you see a bird, you gotta see a bird and you know. So I saw this bird and I knew that I had to go get it. So I said to the guy, hey man, save it for me. The guy's name, they call him Narra, which means more like Chinese. The guy said, sure, I, I save it for you. So I drove all the way there, which is about, uh, I think it was about like a hundred and some miles, but it was far, it was about three hours. So I drove there, I paid $25 for the bird. I brought it back, he was crazy, very hostile, very, you know, uh, alive, it's like everywhere. And uh, back then I had the, the pigeons in the lanai. So I married this bird, okay? I married this bird, he, he got very much in love with the mate. See, the, the terminology that I know is Spanish. So I got to put it in, I don't know how to say it in English. So he got very, very much in love and he was following everywhere, so I let him go. So he started flying, the stroke of the wings in this bird in the air, it was beautiful, flying really high, fly here, fly there. Well, I stuck him, he didn't go nowhere. All right, so I uh, <clears throat> put him there. Uh, I, I didn't make, uh, babies with him with that bird that I stuck him with because I didn't want those kind of birds I wanted him to go with the Gaditana which is a black bird that I have that I brought from uh, I think it was Ohio uh, mm, mm, no Philadelphia something like that I bought it so uh, I did I wanted to put it with this bird because this bird has a big huge pout right and it's black you know it's a beautiful bird they never flew her before, but I don't care. I just wanted the babies. And I wanted to put those babies that come out of there with the high flyer and see what come out of there. I, I'm telling you the story about Paul Bacera. So I said to myself, well, this bird is stuck already. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so I let him go by himself. I separated him, let him go by, by himself. Exactly, he didn't go nowhere. He flies, he flies a lot, very high. I love this bird. But it wasn't the time to put it together uh, or with the gaditana that I had because it was summer and all the birds were molting and it was very hot and over here in Florida there's a lot of mosquitoes. So I have to wait until the earliest October to put them together. So I'm waiting, so he's flying, I'm hopping his stock. So all of a sudden he started acting weird. A hawk comes and he just disappears. I'm waiting for a long time. He comes back really scared, he goes in. I'm like, wow, he reacted weird to the hawk. So then I, I let him go again another day. He comes out and, and he goes on a tree. Um, you know what, see these palm trees right here? It's got the, the vertical, <laughs> crazy bird, that's why I named it Paul Bacera. It's got the vertical, uh, 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 branches like this, he goes on the side like this, you know, like like a um, like a parrot. You know, the parrots go on the side like that, and he's like this, uh, sideways. I'm like, what's wrong with this bird? Get out of there! That's my dog. <laughs> That's my female dog. So he's like this sideways for a long time. He looks scared. Like I'm like, what's wrong with this bird? So I get his female, and I go like this, you know, to. to he didn't even budge at that. Okay, I wait. He was there for a long time. I'm looking at him. I'm like, this bird is crazy. So finally he goes in, right? I wait a few days. I let him go again. He's flying like if you don't know this place. He, he want to go down, but he don't want to go down. He's flying and flying and flying everywhere. Like if he, he don't know where he's at. I'm like, dude. So I'm... You know, with my, my with my pito, with my whistle, and he's still he want to go down, and he don't, and he keeps going. I'm like, what's wrong with this bird? All of a sudden, an owl 
because it was getting dark at night. An owl comes, and the bird just went crazy and left, disappeared. Never saw him again, okay? So, listen, four months go by. I'm missing this bird, like it's crazy. Uh, every day I come out, four months, I look up, I'm like, oh my God, I hope this bird comes. <laughs> you know, where is this bird? Okay, four months, uh, I'm talking to my friend, his name is Alejandro El Pico, I'm talking to him on the phone, and he's like, hey man, uh, I, uh, this guy caught a black, uh, caught a black bird, and as soon as he said that, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does he have a band that uh, has a Cuban flag? And I described to him the, the bird and what said in the band and all that. And he's like, I don't know, let me ask him. So he asked his friend. His friend said, well, I don't have the bird no more, uh, but I think that's the band. I gave the bird to, to another guy that lives really far, this place called Lehigh. Okay, so the guy's telling me that, uh, well, he, he was going to give the bird to Alejandro Pico. So Alejandro Pico delayed and go and get the bird, so he gave it away to this guy. So he's telling me the story. He said, man, this bird went to uh, this guy that has homers. And I'm not going to say his name here because I, I I'm not authorized to say his name. But this guy's a champion. He's got homers. He raises homers down here. He lives about four miles from my house, okay? Uh, four or five miles from my house. So he says, according to him, that Paul Bacera, this bird right here, let me get him out again. Come here. This bird right here was in his house for three months. Three months. Get out of here. For three months. And he he would not go down. He couldn't catch the bird. He couldn't catch this bird three months. Okay? And he has he has homing pigeons, champions. So he was flying his babies and Paul Bacera will fly with the babies for a long time, go everywhere, uh, you know, do the same thing the birds did. But when they go down, uh, Paul Bacera will go on a pine tree. That's a no-no because he's trying to train his birds to come into the, the trap. They got there because he's a racing guy. So he's trying to catch this bird. He's trying to catch him. He can't catch him. He, food, female, whatever. So Paul Bacera will go down on his loft at nighttime, right? He will go down at nighttime on his loft and he's trying to catch him and this bird will fly at night, right? He will go out and fly at night. It's so dark. All you hear is. Right? So he, he's falling in love with the bird because he's like, man, this is a good bird. It's been here three months. I can't catch this bird. You know, I guess he was drinking water from puddles and, and eating from, you know, the floor, leftovers, whatever. So if he was lost for four months and that guy had him there for three months, that means he was out there somewhere for one month. Nobody caught him. And over here, there's a lot of owls. No owls, uh, no hawks. He survived, this bird survived for four months. Three months over there, and the other month, I don't know. So it got to the point that the guy said, man, I'm gotta, I gotta kill this bird, because I can't catch him. I gotta kill him, he's messing out my, my babies, my, uh, my youngsters that are flying, I gotta race. So he was about to kill the bird. You know, because he couldn't catch him. And I, I understand completely. He's a razor guy, right? So he says that when he's about to kill the bird, uh, the bird uh, goes inside. I guess he's very hungry. He went inside the, the loft, and he went and get him, and the bird went out the wrong way and hit the wall, and then he was able to trap him. So he got the bird, and he gave it to this guy. So this guy calls my friend Alejandro Pico uh, to pick him up. Uh, Alejandro Pico is delaying, so he gives it to this other guy that lives really far in Lehigh. 
So I'm telling a hundred people, man, that's my bird. My, it says this and this and that and that. So he tells the guy and the guy calls the other guy and say, hey man, I'm sorry, but the owner of the pigeon came forward. So you got to give the, the, the pigeon back. So uh, my other friend, uh, friend, El Foca, went and got the bird and brought it to me. Okay, because he lives close to there. Lehigh is about, it's an hour. It's about an hour away. It's, it's about maybe 60 miles away, you know? So he went, got the bird, brought it for me. When I got that bird, that bird was feathers and bones, okay? This bird right here was, I got him in my hand, and all I could feel was, was his bones, his skeleton, and feathers. I don't even know how this bird survived, okay? So I put him in and I, you know, I medicated him. I started giving him, you know, like probiotics and vitamins. And I started giving him food. You know, I, I, I give my birds the best food. I, put, I, get, I buy all the foods and I put it together. I don't believe in, oh, this food is for this and this food is for when they're molting. You know why I don't believe in that? Because in my country, when I was doing pigeons, the only thing my pigeons was eating was split pea. Okay? Uh, you got pigeons in Cuba, all right, setting records. And over here, over there, they don't have food. Eating oatmeal and spread pea. That's the only thing my, my, my pigeons will eat. Bread and water, oatmeal, and spread pea. So here in the United States, man, they got the best foods. So I, what I do is I get all the foods together. So I stop feeding this bird and feeding this bird and feeding this bird, you know, and, and uh, well, he got, you know, he got fat and fatter and the guy's got getting some meat on his bones and all that. So then I, I you know, I, I started letting him go again it's, and uh, he had no problem. I, I married him with another blackbird with have a big pout. I got some really, really good uh, powders, but I sold them. This guy just gave me a hundred bucks for one. It, I, I was asking for 80. The bird was so good, he gave me a hundred. Took him back to Lehigh, turns out, in, in, in a couple of weeks, uh, not even that, I think it was a week, he called me and said, hey man, I was feeding the bird and the bird left. Nah, I, I, I think uh, he's trying to stuck, stick him and, and uh, he flew away. Cause see my birds, they fly with homers. My, my, uh, my, my powder birds, they fly with homers. So they go really far, you know, but they don't have the ability of coming back from that far. Even though I have one pigeon in Miami that came back from 60 miles, uh, one powder. But anyway, so this bird right here, uh, I put him and I, and I got birds out of him and they were really, really good. I gave one to uh, my friend and the other one I sold it for 100 bucks. I was selling only for 80. The guy gave me 100 bucks. Uh, I said, hey, because see, I don't want a lot of powders. All I want is, I want homers, but I do like powders, you know? If I had that kind of money, man, let me tell you something, I would have a loft for rollers, I would have a loft for uh, uh, tipplers, high flyers, and I will have a loft for uh, powders, and I will have a loft for homers, okay, if I had that kind of money, but right now, uh, I only have powders over here in these boxes, and I don't have too many, because I don't want too many, I just want good ones, uh, and I'm doing selective breeding, so now, coming October, what I'm going to do is, I am going to take Polbacera, the storm, Okay, uh, don't fight me, ow. <laughs> but I am going to take Paul Bacera and I am going to put him with the black gaditana that I have that has this big, huge pout, okay? And I'm going to make some babies from them and, and see what happens. But that's it, I'm not doing the high flyer stuff because it's, it's time consuming. Maybe, maybe in the future, I don't know. Because then when I get the babies from, from them, then I'm going to have to put it, well, I have time to put it, to get a black high flyer. I get it from my friend in Spring Hill because I, I, gave, I gave those high flyers that I have that the parents flew nine hours in the air without coming down. I gave it to my friend in a Spring Hill. So I might get from him and mix it and see what happens. But... I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to leave that alone, okay? But I am going to put, however, Paul Bacera, which is a black diamond mixed with the powder. And I don't know what kind of powder, to tell you the truth. 
but I, I know he's a black diamond because they didn't tell me what type of powder. And I'm going to put him with the Gaditana that I have. And uh, what I think I'm going to get some really nice birds from there. Okay. And then what I do is when they're like a month old, uh, that they can eat by themselves, I just toss them in there with the, with the homers. And they have to, you know, I mean, of course, on the supervision, you know, they have to survive in there with the homers. And the homers feed them too. Because <laughs> when my homers, let me tell you something, when my white homers are, are breeding and they have babies, they feed everybody. This, I had a couple that have four eggs and raised three babies. Three babies, okay? So when I, I toss the, the, the powders in there and the powders, they take the homers. <laughs> So they learn everything with the homers. They'll put them outside and they fly with the homers, okay? So that's it. That's the story about Paul Bacera. Let me see if I can grab him again. Because I want to end the video. I just don't want to keep it in my hand too much. He fights me so much. That's the story about Paul Bacera, okay? He's got a band. He's got a Cuban flag in the band. And he's got an American flag. And it says, Palomo de... Robo, thief powder, pigeon of stealing, stealing birds, Palomo de Robo. I don't know if you can see it there. Okay. And that, and then he's got this right here, this band. This is an AU band, I believe. Oh, no, it's a Chinese band. It's a Chinese band. It doesn't say that. Does it say that here? See, <laughs> they put a Chinese band on it. You can raise... You cannot raise this bird with the Chinese band, but it's okay. You can put a Chinese band if you're not going to raise the birds, you know, just to know what year are they from. But this one doesn't say the year. It just says the number. And it says CHN, which is China. But it's, I don't understand this band. It's got this uh, coat there, you know. Um, so this guy right here, man. You just see how he flies now. He's got so much seduction. Because, see, he's still, he's mixed with the homer, but his seduction is like A1A seduction, man. This bird is seduces, you know? So, anyway, this is the story about Paul Bacera. I love this bird. I will never get rid of this bird. All right? I love this bird, man. He's got some good qualities. He gave some good babies. He's a, he's a nice breeder. He's like in love with the babies, with the eggs. He, he, he feeds the babies until they're about to blow up, <laughs> you know. But you see, his beak is, is like a little bit like a homer, but a little bit like a, uh, like a powder pigeon. See that? And look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. He's got the black diamond's eyes, but he also got the maybe Laudino's eyes. I don't, I don't know, you know, but it's beautiful, beautiful bird. Okay, guys, I just want to tell you the story of Paul Bacera, the storm. Beautiful bird. I'm not going to let him out today because I'm going to let all the females. And he is a lover boy. And I'm not, I don't know. If I let him out, if I let him out with my females, he will do everybody in there. He will do them and the mother and the grandmother. Okay? He will go from bird to bird to bird to bird to bird. And he's trying to. Bring him into his... No, I don't want that. Okay, guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching this show, man. And uh, this is the story of Paul Bacera. Please subscribe to the channel. And I hope you like my pigeon show. Oh, glory to the most high. And, um, hey, you guys have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. Thank <laughs> you.